All right, welcome back. And uh, still staying with health, uh, second part of our tripartite discussion that we're having this morning is with COVID-19 vaccinations and infertility. Fertility, is it myth or reality? And we're having a discussion uh, with, with two wonderful resource persons. Uh, Dr. Bami Ajayi is an obstetrician and gynecologist. Uh, he joins us via Zoom. Great to have him join us this morning, Dr. Ajayi. Having me. Good to see you. Excellent. And uh, the brilliant, brilliant <laughs> Dr. Lara Roberts, public health physician, is here also still with us. Uh, thank you, Dr. Roberts, for staying with us. about COVID-19 and the fear of, as you're just celebrating the fact that the numbers are you know, going down in the country and perhaps that a few people, let me say thousands of you, have been vaccinated, looking forward to more people get, getting vaccinated. Then the Indian stream comes on and then the federal government says, okay, we're going to be very cautious with, with uh, in-flights from uh, Turkey, from India, from... What does this tell people about COVID-19 in present day terms, Dr. Alev? It, <clears throat> that COVID-19 is still very much with us. It is still very much a problem and it's still very much a threat to our health system. We cannot let down our guard. We simply cannot. We, we, we've, we've managed it so far and we've weathered some of the worst storms that the world has had to deal with, despite the fact that we know we've got a very com si com sa health system. But our public health interventions have worked and are working hands, face, space. Hmm. It's very simple. We don't have the wherewithal or the infrastructure to deal with a quarter, a third, a tenth of what the Indian situation is. And we've been, we in the public health space have been watching with fear and trepidation hmm. that please, we should not let down our guard to the point where our past gains now become of no effect. Hmm. We still do not have the infrastructure required. If India can be facing the situation that they are facing, and don't forget, India was the medical tourist destination of the world. Yeah. Right. And look at where they are today. Who are we to think that we would be any different if we do not keep doing what we know works? Right. Hands, face, space. Right. Doing what we know works starts with getting out the right information there. And this is what we're doing also, too, with this yeah. discussion around uh, the COVID-19 vaccination and infertility. Dr. Ajay, a fertility expert, I'm sure you've heard uh, the theories being put out around there. And the first thing we want to ask you <coughs> is to help to, uh, I think this way I'm not going to, I'm going to be unbiased about this, help dispel this myth oh, straight away without even <laughs> asking the question whether you should be objective about our response or not. But, uh, Dr. Ajay, great to see you again. Yes, same here. Yeah, always a pleasure to be with you. Yes, I think um, we all were caught napping by the uh, virus when it first came. But I think over time we recovered and so many things that were knee jerk initially, I think we relaxed some of them, especially from the fertility phase. You know, when this first started, the, the thing was that we should stop fertility treatment all over the world. But um, from about May, I think that uh, that was relaxed. And then now um, we know that just like Dr. Alero said, mitigation, we have to mitigate the risk. All the mitigation factors were also introduced. Fertility treatment, we limited the number of patients that we will see. We have to triage. Do you have fever? Do you, before you come to the clinic, then with some of the time we use from some form of PPE. And uh, also, uh, sometimes you are in the middle of the treatment and the patient shows symptoms, you have to freeze to see what's going to happen. But right now, I think the major thing is not the coloration of the vaccine. And we're getting more and more information about the safety of the vaccine, uh, even in our own group of patients, either who are considering pregnancy or they're trying to be pregnant or they're already pregnant. And we're seeing that now the safety band is increasing more and more. You know, we first started with that we were not, we didn't have enough information, we didn't have enough data. But right now, I think things are becoming more and more relaxed. We're seeing that you're, you're better off, actually, especially there's some people, group of people that should be vaccinated, whether they are pregnant or not, depending on their risk factor. For example, people, the doctors who work in here, 
they should, because of the risk factor of contacting severe COVID, it's better than they are back. Of course, we know that everybody has a choice, but this, these are the recommendations. And even for people who are seeking fertility now, it's more relaxed that you can have your vaccination and do your fertility. I think more it's becoming more uh, more clearer than when we started and everything was well, uh, just lying in the dark. All right, Dr. Ajay, I'm, stay, I'm staying with you. Let's say COVID-19 is just about, if you're taken by the world's uh, assessment, maybe late 2019, let's say even 2020, let's say January 2020, and we're in April uh, 2021 as we speak at this point. And so many people are concerned, especially pregnant women are concerned uh, with, with the, the question of whether they can take the vaccine or even when they contract COVID-19, the effect that it could have on the, on the child when it's born or even the unborn child in, 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 in their womb, so to speak. Uh, we've heard that perhaps COVID-19 vaccine may not have as much effect on pregnant women, but some people are accusing that some children that have been you know, born afterwards possibly would have some defects. Can you please shed more light on that? Well, there is no data to show that COVID-19 vaccine will give any form of uh, abnormality. Uh, neither is even that the infection itself We've, we've, it's been seen that some neonates have developed COVID-19 after birth, yes, but not not like Zika. I think one of the problems we had was we had the hangover of Zika. We were just equating Zika with COVID-19, but we have more information now. But we know also that pregnant women now, we know they can be worse off when they have COVID-19 than uh, non-pregnant women. So the, the, the facts should be fact. Then. Fears should be fears. All right, um, uh, 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 Dr. Roberts. Um, so something's also, you know, got my attention when Dr. Ajayi was talking about um, just exactly what sort of situation we find ourselves in. It's a vaccine uh, new. It's a virus that we haven't had before. Also, too. so a lot of the studies we've seen also to um, many of the results we hear new updates now and again with what is happening. Does it make it any easier? knowing that you probably be get, going to get updated information about certain things, whether to vaccinate children, for example, or pregnant women or mothers and all sorts of things. Uh, does it create the space for people to begin to speculate about what the vaccines can do or not do? It will always, you will always have conspiracy theories. That's, mm -hmm. that's the problem. You know, with, with everybody is entitled to the, whatever opinion that they, 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 they want, but I'm going to steal Dr. Ajayi's um, comment, um, uh, statement. Mm -hmm. let, let, let the facts be the facts yeah. and let the fears remain in place, remain where they are. So the truth of the matter is you are, he, there's one thing that is clear because a lot of people said it and we, there was something trending on social media at the time that, oh, don't take the vaccine. 3% uh, of babies born have been born with congenital malformations. Yeah. And I'm, I'm suddenly thinking, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Mm -hmm. So I checked my diary and I think, the first, by the day the first vaccine was given, the pregnancy has not gotten to point. term. We have not been given the vaccine for, ten, for nine months. Mm. A pregnancy mm. is nine months. Right. So, and then assuming, knowing that in the beginning when we were giving the vaccine, when we first started giving the vaccine, we were not giving it to pregnant women because we were, the, the data was not yet in as to its safety. Uh, and I think I've said it even on this program that you have to weigh the risks the pros and cons and the risks and the benefits of giving it to a pregnant woman, as Dr. Ajay said, if she's a frontline worker, you know, she, the woman has to have that discussion with her doctor mm. and that decision can be taken. But by and large, we weren't giving it to pregnant women. So how could babies now be born with congenital malformations mm. and you attribute those congenital malformations to the vaccine? Hello? Mm. Mm. You know, le 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 <laughs> the math is still the math. You understand what yeah. I'm saying? Now, the data is coming in that in, there is no real effect on pregnancy in pregnant women or even, I mean, now they've gotten the data down to, I think, age 12. Mm. So in, in, in the US, you know, and, and ch children aged between 12 and 16 Can. are eligible to take the vaccine. The beauty is that we are also leveraging on decades of knowledge that has been put together. I mean, we, we were talking about the malaria vaccine en passant a little earlier on. It's amazing that I just read up that it's the amount of research that had gone on to developing the malaria vaccine right. was in fact leveraged upon 
to develop During, the COVID-19 yeah. vaccine. Mm. So it didn't just come out of nowhere. We're, we're doing layer upon layer, precept upon precept. And that way, we are now confident that whatever new knowledge is coming out mm. is, in fact, simply an uncovering of knowledge that we had, but yeah. simply hadn't applied right. to this situation. All right, right. Uh, Dr. Bayomi, let, let me ask a question as, as a fertility expert. One of the questions that, as a woman, that uh, people especially who are seeking to get pregnant, maybe asking at this point, is COVID-19 vaccine, does it have any adverse effect on the embryo for those who are willing to do, for instance, uh, assisted fertility conception, so to speak? Can you shed more light on that? I do hope he's with us. Uh, okay, Dr. Ajay, are you there? Uh, it looks like we've got some. It's not there. Here. I don't know if we can attend to the question because some women who are. Uh, okay, he's here. Yeah. All right, Doctor. <laughs> yeah. Did you get well, the question? Not, you want me to come no, over I, it again? I did not. Please. Repeat the question. All right. Uh, the question is for women who are in treatment already. Uh, for fertility purposes, for instance, maybe the embryo, uh, they're about even getting them out to help them get uh, pregnant, so to speak. Getting vaccinated, would it have any side effect on the quality of their eggs or whatever other, you know, health conditions they must satisfy before they can be fit for that treatment? Well, like I said, the data is coming out more now, and uh, we're getting more and more relaxed about that. What's the last a recommendation you know first of all we first said oh wait for about two months but now the last recommendation is that only invasive things like when you want to bring out eggs uh, if you can even get vaccinated but you give yourself at least three to five days see that there is no allergic reaction to the vaccine itself so we can we are more and more comfortable with the fact that the vaccine does not affect fertility people just need to be what about for men i'm asking this because i'm sure it's not all the time we have you here i would like for you to clarify with men some men are still very worried especially those for newly married men and they're like ah i won't go and take covid 19 vaccine now it will not affect me would it affect the quality of of, of spermatose is there any other thing that could have adversely when they get vaccinated with covid 19 uh vaccine so to speak well, the data does not say that. There is nothing that supports that. I mean, that with some of the things that the conspiracy theories. I think, really and truly, what I want to, what I've learned from this COVID-19 vaccination and everything about COVID-19 is that we practitioners, sometimes we don't do enough work in letting the people understand what we're doing. We tend to walk in a corner and then come out and expect everybody to embrace it especially now that there is a, a social media because they because just like dr alero said the people these conspiracy theories they are even working harder than the scientists and they really most of the things that we're saying they said before us and they said what is not true and this these people they cut across all kinds of people in the society from people of influence to people of I mean, it's just, it's, just, it's just crazy what we have now. But I think we should still listen to the scientists and trust the science. Um, said, you know, <laughs> but for the man who's worried. Yeah. So, so, Dr. Ajay, something I'm also thinking about. Um, if, if you, if you, when you think about um, the fact that um, uh, we're in the vaccination season, even though you're having spikes happening in other countries, we talked earlier about the fact that um, uh, fertility services uh, were being affected because of um, the pressure on, um, you know, on, on uh, the COVID-19, um, you know, uh, pandemic and all of that. Ha has it improved now? Or are we still COVID-19 centric in how services have been administered? Yeah, we're st the service delivery is still, of course, we can, just like uh, Dr. Alero said, COVID is not gone. I mean, we'll be kidding ourselves, it's gone. Um, even the figures that were recorded in Nigeria, I pray and hope it is so. I mean, because this doesn't seem to rhyme with other parts of the world, but it's okay. We're lucky. We've been very good with public health, just like she said as well. 
But um, I think COVID is still very much with us. So with the service delivery, we're still very conscious of that. But with the, um, I don't think it has affected the uptake. The initial reaction, maybe April, May, uh, June, coupled with the fact that there was a lockdown also, yes, there was people were hesitant, but I think more and more people have, have become relaxed from the consumer point of view. They, they become more and more relaxed about it. Now let's talk about uh, moving forward, and especially when it has to do with women who are breastfeeding at this point in time. They also are asking questions. They already have their, their children already, and they're breastfeeding, and they're worried uh, uh, about taking the vaccine because they still have to feed their children. I don't know how safe this could be for the child is still suckling. Yes, as Dr. Ajay said, there's no data yet to say there's any danger. And, I mean, thankfully, the vaccine has now been around, what, a, about a little over three, four months. Yeah. You know, women have delivered in that period, and some women who have delivered in that period have had the vaccine, you know, because they're either frontline workers or exposed to frontline. They're in, you know, positions where they do need to be vaccinated. Mm -hmm. And we have not seen anything to give us any cause for concern. And as far as we know, scientifically, judging from the nature of the vaccine, the nature of its production, the nature of its delivery, the nature of the way it acts in the body, there is no reason to have any cause for concern. But this is still all a process of time. Like we saw with the blood clotting incidents in some women, the numbers may be very, very, very small. But if one person is affected, it's enough for us to say, yeah, hey, hold on. You know, and then we are now getting there, some categories of women, they are advising not to take the vaccine. But so far, so far, none of that affects women who are breastfeeding their babies. And when you yeah. weigh it against the risk of not breastfeeding your baby, hmm. or breastfeeding while you're not vaccinated. Oh, well, no, because there are going to be a lot of women who are still breastfeeding while not vaccinated mm -hmm. because the vaccine is not, still not widely available. Mm -hmm. But I would much, 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 much rather a woman breastfeeds her baby exclusively for the first six months and then continuously till the baby is at that's least two a, that's years another, old. That's another discussion. For I know that's yeah, another discussion, but you know, yeah. there are yeah. documented risks hmm. of not breastfeeding as opposed to documented risks of breastfeeding while vaccinated. Mm. 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 You, uh, Dr. Bami Aja, you, you've been in this field for, for a long while. I, I'm sure you've seen the trends and how it's happened over time with this sort of things. But uh, with, with the COVID-19 vaccination, there's so, many, um, there's so many things we're not too clear about. Uh, the longer the Indian um, spike continues and the situation happens, we're not too sure when uh, the next batch of vaccines will arrive. It's, it puts a lot of things in uh, no man's land, like they say, in how things have been you know, planned by the government and all of those involved in getting the vaccines to the other groups uh, outside the frontline workers and, and the ones who, um, the, the VIPs and all the groups which have been designated by the Ministry of Health. Uh, the longer this goes on, what impact do you think is going to have on uh, fertility um, services? Well, I don't, like we, we've said that the, the, we're talking about not having vaccine or when we have vaccine. When, when, we, when we have the vaccine, so now we have just for what, um, just for the first group of, um, the, of the people, um, the four million. But outside that, mm. we're not, we don't have any idea when that will come, in, come into play. Mm. I, I think the, the wise thing to do, whether you are vaccinated or you are not vaccinated, is to continue with the mitigation, just like Dr. Alero said, the, the hand, the face, and the space. So you just need to continue. With, there is no. The, the thing is, I don't know when we are going to end using masks. That's just the, the only thing. And I think uh, if you call it inconvenience, the small inconvenience co compared to having COVID. So I think we just need to continue with the um, public health advice that we've been given on how to during this period of COVID. All right, now let's talk about, uh, for instance, I'm taking 
headlong fertility questions to you because I believe that's what our viewers would want to ask if they had the opportunity to. Uh, would you advise a couple seeking a secondary form of, uh, uh, in the conception, your, your services for instance, IVF, to uh, hold on at this point in time where COVID is around, or is it safe for them to still go ahead with their plan regardless? Oh, definitely they can go on with their plan. That's what uh, we've been saying all day, that now we know that they can go. They don't need to wait. In fact, they can even get vaccinated. So that, I mean, that's, that's how the data is showing us now. So that's, uh, they should go on with their plan. I'm happy you answered that question because our friends who are very worried about getting, you know, going ahead with the IVF treatment now because they feel for fear of COVID-19. So thank you very much for clarifying that. I saw you nodding your head because do you think people have enough information, especially those who uh, should even get them? Well, the thing is that getting enough information, having enough information, absorbing enough information and using enough information are four completely different topics of conversation. So... I must commend everybody involved in giving out this information that so far, that yes, that we do have an infodemic of false information, yeah. but, but we've got some very credible sources of reliable information. And, you know, we have to thank the NCDC for that, MPHCDA, the media organizations such as yourselves for making sure that you do get the experts on board to give out the right information. So if people want to be informed, and this is something that pre predates COVID anyway, if people want to be informed, they do know where to go for reliable information. You know, nobody is misled except they want to be misled. But social media has a mind of its own. If you want to believe it, you would, no matter what anybody says. I know, I know the number of times my husband and I sit down at night hands on our head, and we're refuting all kinds of hmm. false posts that sometimes even come from colleagues. It's, it's scary. And they say, oh, I didn't even think about it. I just forwarded it. And I'm thinking, will you please examine yourself? Well, before you, you know, click, before the, you send click the send yeah. button, mm -hmm. you know? But that's all very well. This is, then we come to the people who want the information, who, are, who want that information so they can apply it correctly. So... You asked a very pertinent question to, doc, to, to Dr. Ajay, and I just want to reinforce what he said for the sake of viewers, that please, it is very safe for you to go about and get whatever medical treatment you need, including IVF and other fertility treatments, so long as the place where you are going to get it is safe. So you're going into a proper health facility that has got all its safety protocols in place, you know, then you, you can go. And this, this, this is going across board now. You're going for your cancer treatment, your kidney treatment, your hypertension, diabetes, your fertility, everything. Make sure where you're going is an accredited health facility that has all their safety protocols in place. And you know what those safety protocols in. You get your hand sanitizer on entry, you're required to wear a mask. It's evident that the place is clean, there's running water, there's hygienic protocols in place. Then please be assured that it is safe for you to go and get whatever medical treatment that you require. Thank Absolutely. You. Absolutely. And, and, and Dr. Jai, they say if you follow the signs, you should not be wrong in how uh, you get to the end result, especially with the COVID-19, the vaccination, every other matter related with it. But, but also help us understand, um, because a lot of what we've talked about is based on, um, uh, even though they're preliminary tests, but they're um, experiments which have been carried out, trials which have been carried out to know whether this is safe or not safe. What are the things which have struck you beyond the fact that people who um, are pregnant or those who are seeking to get um, pregnant are not going to be adversely affected if they take the vaccine? What other things do you think strike out from those um, uh, tests and trials that have been conducted? Uh, uh, well, we are scientists, and so I think we just need to be confined by evidence. And you can only get evidence from the tests that are carried out. Um, you know, we say in the list of um, evidence that personal experience is the list, you know? So that's like, it's it, for evidence is the weakest evidence. So we have to rely on studies and data that have been conducted. And so that's what 
we do. But some of the things that, you know, we've been saying here that we need to restate very well is that the risk of you catching COVID, whether you are pregnant or you are not pregnant, is worse off than the risk of vaccination. And I, I think that we should, we cannot overemphasize that, that the risk from you catching COVID, I mean, is outweighs the risk of vaccination, and that we should stay with. Now, if you are pregnant and you get COVID, we now have data that shows that you, you might be worse off than someone who is not pregnant. So, and that stands to reason. We know that pregnancy affects your immune system. So, that's the reason. So, those are the, we should just stick to the facts. So, uh, I think it's just the fact that I, as a scientist, can just rely upon, and that's why it's not. Thank you so much, Dr. Abayo Miachai, uh, fertility expert, of course, uh, gynecologist, obstetrician, all the things that you need when it comes to fertility is with him. And we have a primary health care expert in the house, Dr. Alera Roberts. We want to take a very short break. You're still watching News Hub. We're taking a look at COVID 19 and the fertility question. Uh, we'll come back to wrap up on this in a moment. Just stay with us. The fight against COVID-19 is far from over. We are presently in the community transmission phase. Unfortunately, this is the most deadly part of its spread, and it's more prevalent in high-density areas. Don't become a statistic. Wash your hands frequently with soap and running water, or use a hand sanitizer, and remember to practice physical distancing at all times and avoid crowded places. But if you have no choice, you have the choice of wearing a face mask. Remember, it's not over till it's really over. This is a message from the Silverbird Group. For more news stories, Kindly visit our website www.silverbednews24.com. You can also watch trending news videos on our YouTube channel. We are just a click away on WhatsApp, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Get the news in your prime on your mobile phone by downloading Silverbed News 24 from your Play or App Store. File in your witness report on our website or send an email to silverbedm24 at gmail.com. All right, welcome back. And this uh, for the COVID-19 vaccination uh, as well as infertility. Uh, connecting the dots is what we've been doing here. So let's get to Dr. Bami Ajayi, obstetrician and uh, gynecologist, for his closing remarks. Well, thank you so much. Um, I think I've also, it's a pleasure to be here today and I've learned a few things also. But the most important thing for us is to assure, up, just like uh, Dr. Robert said, that they should be mindful of where they get the information. Medical information is from doctors, no other person. And also, there are different kinds of doctors. You know, when you are talking to some people who is not their tough, then you might also not be getting the adequate information. So I think everything is on information and information. And Believe the science. That's my last one. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Barmi Ajay. I look forward to hearing from you soon. All right. Dr. Lara Roberts, closing thoughts. Very, very simple. What works, works. Mm. We must maintain the public health interventions. We must be cautious. We must remain on our guards and always remember hands, face, space. Mm -hmm. Let's not let down our guard. Like Dr. Ajayi said, getting COVID is not funny. Mm -hmm. It's not funny. And, you know, we, the, since we really do not know why our numbers are not higher than they are, we also do not know why they are not. And therefore, we must stick to what works mm -hmm. and not let down our guard. Thank you so Please much. Please keep up the good work of making sure the right information gets out. You have a responsibility to that, even though you don't have a responsibility to what people do with it. Yeah. But well, at least they need the information. Dr. Alara Roberts, thank you so much for being part of the program today. Thank and you. And once so again, much. Dr. Bayo Miyajawa, we thank you for your time and thoughts uh, on the program. 
You still watch your news hub with switch guests for the last lap of the show. When we return, do stay with us.